In an effort to combat rising gun violence, the city is adding an additional 200 frontline officers on the night shift starting this evening, and that will last through most of the summer into the fall. As of last Sunday, 26 people have died in gun violence. That's up from 17 last year. Joining us now to talk more about the need for the stepped-up presence is Toronto Police Chief Mark Saunders. And Chief, thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, good seeing you, Roger. Uh, where are we going to see these officers going? 200, I mean, when you look at the map of where shootings have happened across the city, all across the city, is 200 officers going to make a difference? Uh, no, no, absolutely. And, and I say that because it, it feeds the narrative that I've said all the time. When, when we talk about the modernization plan and when we talk about being where the public needs us most, uh, one of the key factors is the deployment. Where do we put our officers? And, and on average, during 7 p.m. to 3 a.m., which is where most of the gunplay is happening, um, we have about 200. 245 officers. I've made it very clear uh, since I've started this journey that we need to realign our resources better at key times of the day. And so the association has just started, and I mean just started, had they done it sooner, uh, the situation might be different, the landscape might be different. But uh, now that we're working towards uh, changing the shifts from a 35-year-old shift to deal with today's pressures, I think we, we have an opportunity to really take control of what needs to be taken control of. Now, is this going to be like Tavis, what we saw a few years ago where a group would come into one neighborhood focus on that neighborhood? No, and I want to stay on script with this. In order to, to resolve the gun issue, it's not just about police officers and having more police officers and saturating the neighborhood. There is a whole list of, there's a suite of things that have to be done in order to get this right, from the front end to the enforcement piece, which is our role, and then the back end. When we look at people that are motivated to shoot and will shoot other people, I, I think that they hit another stratosphere in the criminal system, and I think there needs to be that strong deterrent, there need to be stronger conditions and things along those lines, but when we incarcerate What's happening after the fact? You can't put someone in jail for a couple of years, give them three meals a day, a place to sleep, and then open the door, kick them out, and say, okay, well, here you go. Yeah. And they're going back into the community. They have no skills, no tools. The community sees a different product. And so nothing's going to happen except the police are going to be engaged again. So we've got to close the loop. We have to be smarter with our resources. We all have to take equal ownership if we're going to get it right. So when you're talking about that, would you like to see more programs in, in jail? Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I want to give them trades, give them careers? Ideally, I'd like to see more programs at the front end. Yeah. We have some great programs right now, and we're working with many agencies, and, and part of this plan has that. But unfortunately, it's not as sexy. People want to see dynamics in action, <clears throat> which is too bad, but they all are equal if we're going to get this right. Now, I'll have more officers out. It is not to do the enforcement piece. It is to be surgical, strategic, understanding who the criminal element is, which, by the way, is a very small number. When mm -hmm. we deal with 2.8 million people, I'm not saying I need more people to enforce the entire city. I need more people to do a couple of things. Check with the bail compliance. We have certain people that, that should be complying with their bail, and these are people that are gunmen, um, having uh, positive contacts with members of the community. That's a big thing, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. They are the eyes and ears of all of the communities. And when we talk about the communities, 98% of the community people are good, law-abiding people. I've got mothers who are concerned about their babies playing and, and gunplay being happening. So they want the police there, but they also want the police to be there for the right reason not enforcing the entire neighborhood, but knowing who the players are. So how we train our officers, the information we give our officers in real time to understand who we're looking at, why we're looking at them. And by the way, that's not carding. When, when, when the public defines carding as random, this is not random. If I'm a police officer and I know that person belongs to that street gang, I'm talking to him and investigating him because I know mm -hmm. he is in a subculture that uses firearms. That is not carding. So I want the public to be aware of that. If my men and women know who they're talking to and know the activities that they're up to, that is not carding. Are you working with community groups as well when it comes to this to try and better integrate to both sides? We have, we always have, and we will continue to. I, I, what my ask is that there is an expansion on it from all ends of the spectrum if, if we're going to get this right. And, and by and large, the men and women are doing a fantastic job. When you look at the work that has been done, since we started this project in, in June, of, June 14th, we've already seized over 76 firearms. So, I mean, the work is out there. The men and women are doing a fantastic job. We want to do a good job. We want to get it right. Um, but there's more work to be done, and, and there has to be more of a collective approach if we're going to be successful. All right, Chief, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, today. Roger.